I will make you as a light for the nations. That my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Eternal Father, at the baptism of Jesus, you revealed him to be your son, and your Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. Grant that we, who are born again by water and the Spirit, may be faithful as your adopted children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Scripture. Our Old Testament lesson today is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Behold my servant who I am hold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his law. Thus says the God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people a light for the nations to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please remain seated as we pray Psalm 89, verses 20 through 29. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. My hand shall hold him fast, and my arm shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not be able to do him violence. The son of wickedness shall not hurt him. I will smite his foes before his face and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and my mercy 
shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will give him dominion over the sea, and with his right hand shall he rule the rivers. He shall say to me, You are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation, and I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. My mercy will I keep for him forever, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed will I make to endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. <coughs> New Testament lesson is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. <coughs> So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee, after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were opposed by the devil, for God was with him. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. Please be seated. <clears throat> Yesterday, January 6th, we began a new season in the church year, the season of Epiphany. Coming immediately following the Christmas season, Epiphany celebrates Jesus as he appeared or was made manifest to the entire world. That's literally what epiphany means, to appear or to make manifest. In early epiphany celebrations, there was, it was a feast that celebrated three things. The journey of the three wise men, or magi, to see the Christ child, the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan, and Jesus' first miracle when he turned the water into wine at the wedding feast at Cana in Galilee. And we still celebrate those three things. We celebrate the Magi, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar on January 6th, the baptism of Jesus on the first Sunday after January 6th, which is today, and then the wedding feast at Cana in Galilee in year C, of the second Sunday after January 6th. So they took a threefold celebration and basically spread it out into three weeks. Today, 
we celebrate the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan. One of the questions that is frequently asked about Jesus and his baptism is this. Why did he need to be baptized? I mean, if water baptism was a baptism for the repentance of sins, Jesus didn't need to do that. Jesus went through his entire life without sinning. So why did he do it? The answer is simple. Jesus didn't need baptism. Baptism needed Jesus. Just as for us, baptism is the beginning of our ministry here on earth. So for Jesus, his baptism was the formal beginning of his ministry on earth. Sure, he had been doing things up to that point, like teaching in the temple when he was 12 years old. But this was the time when he would really kick it into high gear, doing the will of the Father for three years, leading up to his death on the cross and his resurrection. Jesus, by being baptized himself, made baptism for us one of the two great sacraments of the gospel that are generally considered necessary for salvation. Through his baptism, Jesus showed us the way. For us, baptism is the sacrament of Christian initiation. It is that blessed time when we are not only symbolically washed clean of our sins, but it is also that time when we enter into a covenant relationship with Jesus Christ and become a part of the family of faith, the body of Christ, the church. We receive the promise of life eternal in the future and the promised guidance of the Holy Spirit in the here and now, and we promise to do certain things. And those things are written in our baptismal vows, which we will renew today. <laughs> our baptismal vows are generally in three categories. First, we reject Satan and all worldly things that draw us away from God. We turn to Jesus Christ and we accept him as our Lord and Savior. And then we make promises to live a certain way going forward in a way that makes Christ manifest in the world around us. God uses us to continue the epiphany. I want to look at the last two baptismal vows because today is a special day in the life of our congregation for another reason. Later this morning at the 10 o'clock service, we will be instituting our new chapter of the Daughters of the Holy Cross, and we will be initiating five new members, Lane Haythorn, Teresa Sharnick, Kathy Villanueva, Barbara Volker, and Nancy Wayne. And they will join an order of women who commit to live by a rule of life and that rule of life will include prayer, study, service, and evangelism. But these four things, prayer, study, service, and evangelism, are not unique to just the daughters. They are things that we are all called to do as baptized believers in Jesus Christ. Let's look at each of these things and how they relate to our baptismal vows. I'm going to start with study. Immediately following the vow where we become Christians, when we turn to Jesus Christ and confess him as our Lord and Savior, the baptismal covenant tells us to do things, two things. Here's the first. Do you joyfully receive the Christian faith as revealed in the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. This is why study is so important and why we take a vow to do it for the rest of our lives. Without Scriptures of the whole Old and New Testament, we can't really know who God is. We don't know who Jesus is. And since Holy Scripture is inspired by the Holy Spirit, we don't really know the Spirit either without study. 
in my 16 years as a priest, when I see people come off the rails theologically, it's not necessarily because they woke up one morning and decided to reject Jesus. It's because they didn't study and slowly replace the true Jesus as revealed in the Bible with their own version, their own ideas of who Jesus should be. Studying scripture keeps us grounded. Holy scripture is the rails that keep the train on the tracks. And even better yet, it is the foundation that makes the following three things possible. If we don't study and are not firmly grounded in the faith, we cannot be effective at prayer, service, or evangelism either. If I have convicted you in any way by this, don't worry, take heart. Now is a great time to start. There are several ways to do this, and I actually recommend all of them. First, find a Bible study here at the church. We currently have three of them and a fourth one about to start. Ask me or any of the clergy about them. Second, find or gather a small group and get together for study. Things like an Anglican fourth day reunion group or just a group of friends getting together to read through and discuss scripture. This can be very meaningful. And then, as always, feel free to read scripture yourself, but make sure that you stay connected to the church and your study as well. And most importantly, when you study scripture, don't just study it for knowledge. That's important, but the ultimate goal of scripture study is transformation of life. Allow the scriptures to penetrate your hearts, transforming them more into the likeness of Jesus. Only then will you truly bear fruit worthy of the kingdom. And I want to look at prayer, service, and evangelism together because they relate more closely to the last baptismal vow Will you obediently keep God's holy will and commandments and walk in them all the days of your life? We've talked a lot over the last year about the importance of outreach and evangelism. Our vision statement is reaching forth our hands in love to bring those who do not know Jesus to the knowledge and love of him. Any effort to reach the lost with the saving gospel of Jesus Christ must begin with prayer. Remember what Jesus says, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Whenever we go out into the world, we must first be prepared. You see, when people come to Jesus, it's not because of what we've done. It's an act of God's prevenient grace. And the more that we pray that God will use us to bring the good news of salvation to all people, the more that will actually happen. If we're not doing that, God's probably sitting up there in heaven thinking, well, what are you waiting for? And finally, as Christians who are well studied and well prayed, it's time to go out into the world and spread the joy and good news of Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, today is a joyous occasion. Today we continue to celebrate that God has manifested himself in the world through his son, Jesus Christ. And today we celebrate with our sisters in Christ the new chapter of the Daughters of the Holy Cross. But when it comes to the fourfold call of prayer, study, service, and evangelism, let us not see those things as things that are only the daughters do. 
Let's make each of these things part of our own rule of life. May we stand firmly on the solid rock foundation of Holy Scripture. May we be firmly rooted to God through prayer, that blessed time when we connect with and discern His will for our lives. And may we respond to the needs of the world around us by faithfully serving the needs of those around us. And finally, and most importantly, may God use us mightily and powerfully to spread his good news joyfully in the world around us. Amen. Please stand. Through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism, by which we once renounced the devil and all his works, and promise to serve God faithfully in his one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. Do you, here in the presence of God and the church, renew the solemn promises and vows made at your baptism and commit yourself to keep them? I do. Do you renounce the devil and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the empty promises and deadly deceits of this world that corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the sinful desires of the flesh that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and confess Him as your Lord and Savior? I do. Do you joyfully receive the Christian faith as revealed in the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. I do. Will you obediently keep God's holy will and commandments and walk in them all the days of your life? I will, the Lord being my helper. Let us now reaffirm our faith in the words of the ancient baptismal confession, the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I do. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in Jesus Christ? I do. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I do. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their doctrine, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Please kneel and let us pray for the church and for the world. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God, 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Foley, our bishop, for Foley, our archbishop, Eric, our bishop, and Gaddy, bishop of our companion diocese, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, especially Father Richard and Martha, Julie, Father Francis, Father Russ and Heidi, Father Steve and Father Frank, and for all who teach and disciple others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially Richard, Chris, Quinn, Carol, Bill, Kathy, Guy, you may add your own request at this time. Please also join us in the prayer for mission. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, in thanksgiving let us pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. <laughs> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Please stand. Sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit.
please be seated. Good morning. It's my pleasure to welcome you this morning to St. Michael the Archangel Anglican Church. If you're visiting with us today, we are so very glad that you're here. If you'd like to know a little bit more about what's going on in the life of the congregation, please stop by our visitor's table in the back and we can tell you a little bit more about what God is doing in this place. Also, a reminder that it is the custom and practice in the Anglican Church that all baptized believers in Jesus, regardless of denomination, are welcome to receive Holy Communion, which is the next part of our service. I have a couple of announcements to bring to your attention. First of all, a reminder that offering envelopes are here. If you'd like to pick them up, they are on the usher's table in the back. Um, also, if you did not check on your pledge card that you'd like one, but you would still like one, please either let myself or Father Jim know, um, and we can sign you out a set of envelopes as well. Also, as I mentioned in the sermon today at the 10 o'clock service, we'll be instituting our new chapter of the Daughters of the Holy Cross. We'd love to have you back for that. If you can, if not, please keep them in prayer as they embark on that important journey. And then finally, um, Sparrow's House is having another So Social, and that's going to take place on Friday, January 12, 1030 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the upstairs adult education classroom. It's a beginner class that's going to teach some of the basics of quilting. Um, so if you'd like to come and learn more about that, um, just come. Fabric will be provided. We have four sewing machines that are available, or you can bring your own. But again, that is Friday, January 12th at 10.30 a.m. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries? Let us now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice. 